topic is a bit sensitive and also the need for the day, especially for research, uh, because uh, the way I'm looking at this AI powered research and all this chat GPT and all this uh, LLM models, uh, they are changing the way we, we are working. And especially all of us who are working with the academia, we know uh, the things are changing so quickly and we need to change our practices as well, especially in terms of the research and teaching. Um, I'm I'm sure for every transition which occurs uh, in the world that affect this education sector for first and then it moves to any other sector. So that's my understanding while working with this uh, academia. So the the thing is, we need to change the practices we we do. We need to use these technologies to optimize the process of research. So I'll be talking about the research today only. And I'll give you a few tools and techniques through which you can also uh, use these technologies in a better way and try to improve your research. And obviously, uh, you can do a lot more what you are capable of doing. it. So we'll try to learn how we interact with these technologies and what are these technologies are used for, actually. So AI power research, very important topic. Now, during this uh, presentation, if you have any question, I would request you to write it with you or you can uh, type in the chat box so we can take all the questions later on at the end of the presentation. But uh, I believe the video would also be made available for you because some part of it would be like practice or a tutorial thing. So hopefully uh, that would be useful for all of us. So I'll start my uh, presentation with a very famous quote the science is a beautiful gift to humanity and we should not distort it so that's from uh, abul kalam uh, the, the thing is uh, obviously uh, the technologies are improving in a way uh, it can be misused or ethical concerns are also there so we'll be talking about that part uh, at the end of the presentation but uh, the mainly our learning outcome would be uh, I'll try to introduce how this AI power research works and in every field, no matter if you're from the business. My background um, already uh, mentioned it uh, in the operations management or business uh, studies. So uh, no matter if you are not from the business management or business science. So the thing is uh, uh, AI power research is for everybody. The way you use it, it makes uh, the potential to exploit these technologies. So I'll try to give you those uh, different tools and techniques which you can use. Okay, so first we'll try to learn what exactly AI power research is and where it is being used and how much powerful it is. Then we'll talk about some of these applications. And I'm talking about those applications which all are free. I'm not asking of any, for any application which is uh, paid or uh, you have to pay for that application. So we can use all these AI uh, tools in our research for free and especially when it comes to writing and idea generation all these tools we can use for free and and there are some limitation on each tool but there are different tools which we can uh, use in in order to you know overcome that limitation on each tool so there is no one fit AI tool for all purposes that's why uh, we need to use different tools and we are working in to and fro for this. For example, we will be using ChatGPT, Bing, Bard, but at the same time for the researcher, there are some specific tools, uh, AI-based tools, which are being used and which are uh, very powerful. For example, Illicit, PowerDrill, SciSpace, and Jenny.ai. Very amazing tools and you will see the, uh, the result from these tools and that will encourage you to do more research because research is becoming easy now. The only thing which AI need your assistance is developing the idea. So if you are capable of developing ideas, these tools will magnify your productivity and you can do a lot of research within the limited time. So that's, that's where we'll be using this AI tool. And for for your information, I because I was uh, planning to teach you on, on the uh, AI powered research. So that's why I used AI tools for creating these slides. And um, you would be shocked these slides are being created within just two or three clicks. So I have nothing 
to do in in two or three cases all slides were created and even the content was automated so it means that uh, this ai tool is also really powerful for especially for the teachers who are teaching so uh, you can uh, write the name of this application it is uh, gamma dot uh, app okay gamma dot a double p so finally we'll be trying to learn sorry i'll be trying to learn how we interact with AI tools. So there are two parts of it. One is basically the application or the tool or the AI uh, model or algorithm. And the second is the operator, the user, which is us. Okay, so that's why we need to understand how we can interact with this AI technologies. Is there any specific methods of doing this? So I will be covering that part because this is called prompt engineering. So my focus would be giving you some idea and a, a specific formula which I have created for my short courses on AI power, the systematic literature review. And that formula is usable for everyone. And that is a perfect formula for uh, prompt engineering because prompt engineering is really important. That's I will and discuss in a while why it is uh, so much important to write a proper and accurate prompt. Okay, So we'll discuss that part at the end of the session. And I'll give you a few uh, examples and few uh, tutorials as well with some of these tools uh, if the time allowed us so we can do some practice and you can ask me question on that time. Okay, so uh, now this slide is for uh, my advertisement. I'm and Dr. Mohammed Imran Kweshi already being advertised, uh, sorry, uh, um, introduced by uh, Dr. Rehan Shokas. So I have already published almost 200 plus research article and during and this process, I started with a simple data analyst and now we are using all these big data AI LLM models in terms of data analysis. So things are moving so quickly and making things easier for the researcher that you don't have any limitation nowadays and you can work wherever and whatever you want. So we will be just looking at a few of these examples and the tools for uh, AI uh, power research. So let's, let's try to think what exactly an AI powered research is and how we do that. So basically AI power research with the name it's very clear any artificial intelligence which is being used for research purposes is AI powered research so we are automating the research process it's not that we are working on AI uh, for the research no we are leveraging AI to write our research or to conduct our research so it means that uh, it's like we we give our computers authority to think and we need to provide that food for think okay food for thinking that that's where uh, AI and human interaction comes in or when we talk about AI power research so there are many areas where this AI can easily do your work even in in a few uh, cases I asked AI to check or mark my student work and it did perfect job so with the feedback and all this. So it means that it have that ability to automate any process. Just we need to give them instruction, the right instruction, right set of prompts will do all this work. So AI power research involves the use of artificial intelligence to help researcher conduct experiment and analyze data. And that data can be literature review, can be any quantitative data, anything. So there is no limitation or what we call data okay it can be number it can be figure and now even it can be a literature or pdf file I'll, I'll give you that demonstration how we can use different sort of data sets within uh, ai tools okay and this type of research is becoming more common in today's world due to its many benefits as i mentioned also throughout this presentation we'll explore these ai power research its relevance and current trends and methodology so that's that's just an introduction Let's try to see where and how we use this AI research. So first, as I mentioned in my introduction, a data analysis and pattern recognition. And this data can be anything. It means that literally anything because the deep learning and machine learning allow you to analyze any format of the data, even the 
picture videos have you seen that there are many you know ai tools are already being used over the years for example the drone for example your camera light all these are basically ai uh, driven uh, um, you know tools and what they are doing exactly they have your record and then once you appear in the screen or appear in in any uh, picture uh, the system can automatically detect your face and it can recognize you and this is how the drone technology the most sophisticated drone technology all over the world is working no no human intervention but still it can operate and it can kill people as well so at the same time it have benefits and but also it is uh, dangerous as well but the thing is we can analyze any format of the data with this ai tool so there are no limitation the only limitation is the way you think there is no other limitation so that's for the high end uh, research where we have a huge amount of data different sources of the data and then we need to learn uh, from that data we can do that easily social media posts picture videos comments so okay, all these we may think being a business manager we don't need to use this sort of data no we are using every kind of data and we are trying to analyze that and generating different patterns from that for example social media posts videos comments there are many different format podcasts so all these different formats of the data it was never possible before this to analyze this sort of data without ai tools so that's why this this tells us the story and the strength of ai tools which we already have in them now another emerging tool which is i believe it's, it's really powerful which is natural la language uh, processing nlp okay and also uh, they have llm large language models okay so these nlps are basically which is uh, you you already know that chat gpt and all this uh, autopilot or uh, these uh, microsoft being they are all using these uh, llm model so what this llm model is used for it can tell you anything out of the literature so you can ask any question and system will give you reply based on the literature and i will show you how we can do that and that is specifically for literature review purposes when we are stuck with a huge number of studies and we are not sure from where to start and how we can get the information and uh, do our literature review quickly those who were doing phd uh, maybe uh, 10 years ago they were you know it was quite difficult for them to review literature and uh, synthesize everything and, and then write a literature review chapter and and relate everything because it's not just a literature review chapter in research everything we need to relate it with the literature and that was really a tricky job but now it becomes so easy so uh, i believe it simple that you can do it easily with the text mining and nlp technique so i will take you through all these techniques this is uh, the main topic for today i can't cover the data analysis or predictive modeling simulation but i'll try to cover this nlps and chat gpt thing so we can learn how we can use different tools to analyze the data and generate our literature review from the existing body of knowledge okay so the third uh, most important part where we are doing it is predictive modeling and simulation so it can predict it can allow us to you know predict future uh, i'm not saying that we can just uh, tell the whole story but obviously we can learn from the trend and we can predict future in many ways like stock exchange it's, it's really important to work within stock exchange and now ai model are easily uh, you know uh, do that uh, um, sentiment analysis as well that was really an important part of research because uh, it was difficult to include sentiment within the the analysis but now with ai tool this is also possible because we can do some simulation we can do some predictive model we can check the hypothesis and all this so all sort of simulations and predictive modeling is possible within this ai tool and ai research but my focus would today would be more on a uh, chat gpt and uh, uh, natural learning uh, language processing or llm uh, large language models okay so what 
we'll discuss these parts in, in detail, but uh, these are a few of these applications which we can use in order to uh, work with uh, AI tools. Now, when we talk about AI-powered research, let's bring it to from you know a, a sophisticated lab to a simple PC where everybody can get benefit from these AI tools. So what are those platforms which we can use and we can work with this AI-powered uh, research and AI-powered tools which can help us uh, to automate our research process? Okay, so that's where I have uh, identified a few of these tools, but this is a very limited list. There are many, many, many other tools which we, you can use, but depending on the choice and the need for those I'll take you through these all tools one by one and uh, once we are done we will be uh, coming back to this slide but first let's see what are the different uh, tools available so first and foremost important tool is chat GPT everybody is talking about this chat GPT and uh, this has almost revolutionized everything and the way we think about the, the research and chat GPT is not new uh, we were using the similar uh, large language models in um, uh, if we, if you are familiar with the uh, Quillboard and also Grammarly, all these uh, tools which allow you to correct your grammar or English and paraphrasing, they were using AI uh, models. Uh, so it is not something new, but what happens is uh, chat GPT make it open source and that's where all these you know, information and all this, uh, I think, uh, revolution is, is coming in. So, chat GPT can do so many things beyond your expectations, but we need to learn how we operate with chat GPT. But there are some certain limitations with the chat GPT as well. I will talk about these uh, different uh, sort of uh, the limitations uh, while we will be doing some practical experiment here. But the chat GPT is, uh, there are two versions of chat GPT. One is 3.5 and the second one is 4. So 3.5 version is uh, free to use, but it is uh, until, it have data until September 2021. So that's why uh, there is a limitation on, on the information available. So that might be possible. The information available is not, you know, latest. So that's why we need to, work with chat gpt4 so if you are using chat gpt4 you need to pay at least 20 dollar per month so that's expensive so that's why some people they can afford if you can afford obviously uh, there is no uh, alternative uh, better than chat gpt so please uh, if you can afford go ahead and, and use chat gpt it will help you a lot from writing email to reading your email to you know even writing your um, at simple messages, chat GPT can help you in, in every uh, new aspect of your life. And then, uh, because the chat GPT is based on chat GPT 3.5 for free version, and that limitation is not there in the Bing. Microsoft Bing is the same chat GPT, but it is chat GPT 4, so it can be linked with the, any website and it have all the information. So the latest information is also available on Microsoft Bing and the similar aspect uh, is being covered in Google Bard. Okay, so these two tools are using chat GPT-4, the latest chat GPT, it means that latest GPT means that uh, it is uh, using general purpose technology, but it is also able to interact with the website and collect the latest information. So it will give you some added advantage. We'll see where these advantages are coming in and they become handy. In some cases, yes, we need latest information. And in some cases, I would be prefer to work with chat GPT only. But these three tools, which I mentioned, Microsoft Bing, chat GPT, and BART, these three tools are general purpose and it can work on any aspect of your life. It's not just focus on the research. If you want to ask them to write a, an email to your boss, they can do that. Uh, if you want to write a story, it can help you. If you want to write a song, it can help you. But it's a general purpose technology. So based on these chat GPT 4 and 3 technology, some of these powerful tools are being created for researchers. So PowerDrill is 
worker or output of my work working with you. so how we work with these platforms so the thing is when you are interacting with any ai tool it means that uh, it allow you to ask any question you need to interact with them it's, it is the same case if you are sitting in front of you know many professors in and who have the authority and information about the the, the subject and you want to ask a question so you need to think what type of question that should be that give me you know accurate information i can ask them anything and they would you know uh, reply me but the question i'm going to ask is the key that will unlock the information we need okay so that means that the structure of that question is really important and that's why when we are talking about ai powered research we always talk about the prompt engineering the way the structure you ask your question okay that that's really important so i have uh, uh, developed a formula and that formula is uh, is uh, you know published in a few papers as well so this formula is in process not published really yet but it's just the latest information i'm sharing it with you so this formula is basically the way you need to craft your prompt and remember uh the most important part of of extracting information out of ai tool is the way you write your prompt okay so that's why it's really important to understand the way we interact with this ai tool so i named this formula as the 4c formula there are four aspects of every prompt which you need to cover while you are writing okay so uh you need to give that clear information so you need to give that clear information to all the uh you know ai tools no matter which tool you are using the prompt engineering will remain same okay for example the first thing is about call to action what action do you need what what do you need from this ai platform to do i will explain that call to action because it is a verb or it is call for action okay so the first thing is about the call for action then you need to provide the content okay so content is is really important what type of content you need for example let's say write write is is a call to action so system is ready now i'm going to write something okay what write you need to write a letter now a letter is a content okay so you are giving the content okay so you need to write a letter but in research we do same we need to give it a command or call to action then we need to provide the content what exactly the system need to do okay and then in our research there are two important features which we must need to include in any prompt which is called constructs and context okay so the construct is arrangement of your variable so constructs are basically the variables the outcomes of your research so you need to write what constructs you are looking for and the context for example in some specific country in some specific age group in some specific sector industry all this these types of the information is called the context so remember these four c's call to action content constructs and the context okay so this will give you a prompt structure like this okay so you have prompt structure and this prompt structure would be like this so action verb first thing you need to give it an action or the call to action then the main concept of idea uh, related to literature review because these are some of these tools which we are using for literature review only and this is called the content okay as i i will give you some examples also but with this you need to add construct for example what exactly you you are looking for in terms of your uh variables of the study of the research okay so you need to provide those constructs and finally you need to add the context if your research is context specialist for a specialist uh, for example if you are talking about the male and female if you are talking about uh any gender or any age group or any particular region or sector or particular disease so all these are different form of the context which we need to include within our prompt okay now 
first question here I need to learn is what exactly sorry, what exactly a prompt look like and especially the verbs or the call to action. Uh, sorry, I think I have exceeded the time where I was thinking. So let's just quickly focus on uh, the first thing is about the verb. It's a verb or call to action. Very important one. But there are three types of the verbs which we can uh, understand. Those who are familiar with the Bloom's taxonomy, they are aware of this thought. Uh, one is called lower order thinking, then mid order thinking and higher order thinking. In the lower order thinking, we ask AI tool to just to bring information from the data bank which the, the AI tool already have. For example, if I ask you to remember something or to understand something, this is called a lower order thinking. You are reading, you are remembering, you are memorizing it and and uh, in the exam, I will ask you, can you define? So we have seen this word many times in our examination, define. So defining is like, you need to bring that definition which is already in your mind because you remembered it. Okay, so that, that's how we, we work with the lower order thinking. Then recall, list, recognize, name, repeat, identify, label. All these are some sort of the uh, lower order thinking. But there are many other verbs are also available. I have created a complete list of verbs which reflects the lower order thinking. But lower order thinking doesn't mean that this is a rank. This is not a rank. This is a use case, okay? Remember this and try to understand that the use case means sometime we need to define. Obviously, for example, your construct organizational performance. So I would ask you, can you define organizational performance? This is where you will be using this sort of verbs, okay? Lower order thinking verb, where you don't need to analyze. You just need to retrieve the information. And this is where you will be using lower order thinking. Okay, clear? So once we move on, then we have mid-level thinking where I want the system to bring information from the data bank, but at the same time do some sort of analysis. Okay, so analyze or maybe apply, illustrate, operate, show, implement. So some sort of analysis is being done. It's not just the retrieval of the information, but the retrieval of information with some analysis. Okay, so that how we do work with the mid-level thinking. Most of the time, uh, when we are writing our introduction in literature review or, or any research article, this is where we, we use mid-level uh, you know, thinking and also in the conclusion section of our research. So we try to sum up the information but also provide some you know, implementation or uh, uh, maybe uh, some application or you know, some demonstration. So this is where the, the, we ask AI to bring that information, but at the same time, do some analysis. So this is mid-level thinking. And higher order thinking is a really important one where we ask AI to, to develop something new, to, to make decisions, okay? So this is higher order thinking. For example, critique, defend, develop, these types of the word, for example, I'm I'm planning to develop a new framework. I'm planning to develop a new theory, a new solution for a problem. So all these are uh, thinking uh, abilities which are related with the higher order thinking. This is purely uh, analytical skills or skills where we are taking decisions based on the information we already have. We are not retrieving that information, but we are processing that information and extracting the solution out of that information. So that is higher order thinking. So what I did, I defined the verbs into three different phases, the lower order thinking, mid-level thinking, and higher order thinking, where you can uh, extract information from uh, different you know, uh, AI tools. So let's, let's have a quick example, and then we'll go back to practical session. So if I ask ChatGPT, can you recall the main finding related to the efficacy of cognitive behavior therapy, the content, okay, the efficacy of cognitive behavior therapy about anxiety management. So anxiety management, now it is my construct of the selected studies based on adolescent populations in the clinical setting. So the context is clear. So you can see all these different four parts of our uh, prompts are being done. 
it, but I ask it to recall only uh, any, uh, sorry, for any, you know, analysis. Then mid-level thinking for same research question would be demonstrate how the finding of the reviewed study on cognitive behavioral therapy can be applied in practical clinical setting for uh, managing anxiety and same the context in adolescence. So it means that now the prompt is being changed. The way I crafted this prompt is different than the first one. So first I just asked for recall. Now I ask it to implement and tell me the practical implication, how we can do that. Okay, so this is a question based on the information available. And then finally, higher order thinking is critically evaluate the reliability and validity of the findings presented in the literature on the efficacy of cognitive behavioral therapy for anxiety management in uh, adolescent population. So now if you check on this prompt, the result would be evaluation. So critically evaluate the reliability and validity, which is not available in the literature. So we're trying to assess the information and asking AI to analyze that information and give us the critical uh, evaluation of, of the, the prompt. Okay, so this is where we use these three different uh, distinct level of thinking. Okay, so you need to identify where you want to work on which sort of the uh, thinking. For example, in introduction, we do mid-level thinking. In literature review, most of the time we do lower order thinking, but also sometime higher order where we want to criticize the existing body of knowledge or to develop something new or to develop some new theories out of the existing one. So that's how we work with AI tools. The, this is how we interact with AI tools. Uh, with this, I will go with the practical session, very brief a practical session, and then we can take some questions later on. Uh, let's let's start working with the chat GPT. I believe uh, most of you have already idea what chat GPT is, right? So once you logged into chat GPT, you will see this interface. You need to log in. Uh, you can use any login I'm using this one okay so now I'm here uh, in chat GPT as I mentioned chat, chat GPT 3.5 and chat GPT 4 okay now these two are uh, different features chat GPT 4 you need to pay some um, amount so I'm not interested in it for now so let's work on chat GPT 3.5 now where do I use this chat GPT and why this chat GPT is important? Let's start working on this chat GPT. I'm just giving you a brief idea, but obviously when you will work on these chat GPT and learn, that uh, will give you different options. So you can watch this video again. Um, use that 4C formula and craft your question accurately and then obviously you will get accurate results from these tools. So my idea here is just to give you a brief overview how we use, how we optimize the use of these AI tools. The first thing and which is really, really important to set up chat GPT for the use. Most of the people, they, they are just writing, you know, prompts and they are not giving information to chat GPT. So you can go down here on the corner and there is a, a button for, uh, there are three, dots so click on these three dots you will see this um, tab custom instruction so you need to click here and this is where you need to provide information about yourself and what the purpose of using this chat GPT because your answer would be crafted based on the information you are providing to chat GPT if you are not doing it the chat GPT is too general for everybody so you are not receiving the result you want to okay so first thing Go to this. Now this is where you have different option where you are based, what do you work, why it, it's about yourself. You need to provide. I have created a few templates on this uh, custom instructions for researchers and academicians. So, and these uh, are available on the website. I can share those links later on. So you can download those template and um, provide that information based on the, those templates and copy and paste there. But the second one is also how do you want ChatGPT 
to respond. That is another very important uh, aspect of ChatGPT, which we need to provide this information because when when you have this information provided in the ChatGPT, now ChatGPT is being set up in a way that it will give you accurate answers. So that that's really important for us. And the answer we need, the way we want to craft these answers. So I have these templates, but uh, for now, I think you can just read this information and provide that information to ChatGPT so your replies can be crafted based on your questions, okay, based on your, uh, you know, uh, preferences. So let's go back here for a while for now. It's just, I just want to copy a prompt and show you the difference between these prompts, okay. So let's go to chat GPT. I pasted this prompt and just, I'm not the expert of this study. I just made these cases for illustration purposes only, okay? So when I click here, the chat GPT is giving me all the information, okay? Which is very powerful to the point and accurate because the prompt was accurate okay now can i provide some general information on this but i cannot recall specific finding individual studies the many data include information until 2022 and i can't access that same problem which i mentioned to you is the problem we can't use chat gpt uh, for so that's why the information is until uh, 2021 only so let's try another one Bing. Okay, so Bing is Microsoft AI, uh, but the, the the limitation which we were uh, experiencing in Chat GPT 3.5 is not here. Okay, so what we can do is we can just quickly go to this chat, accept everything. So this is Chat Chat GPT. Now I'm asking same question with Bing. Uh, let's see how this Bing would respond to you. Bing have three different options of writing and it can learn from your profiles as well. So it can give you creative balance or precise answer is depending on your uh, choice, okay? So this is another tool, Bing, very powerful. Now you can see it's not just only giving you information but also giving you the references from where it, it took this information. So that's where the chat GPT can't help you but uh, obviously, uh, Bing can help you in a better way, okay? And similar is the situation for BART. So if you want to click on this link and then you can learn from that link as well and then you will find the different uh, references available here, okay? So you can see here these and there are the links available to these different research articles which are being provided by the Bing, okay? So now this is for Bing and BART. Let's Let's try to look into another one, which is Power Drill, right? Uh, let's work on. Okay, this is Elicit. Elicit is another really powerful um, software, but this tool is I think my credits are over, but still we can just type these questions because Elicit will not allow you to work without some free credits, okay? So every month we have some free credit. Just let's see another alternative, which is size space. It's same like your illicit. We have another alternative. So, I uh, ask similar question.
with size space. Now size space, what this tool is is doing now, it's it's completely different than Bing and Chat GPT. What it is doing is it is giving us information based on just research article. It gives you summary of five uh, different research article and give you a detailed literature review, a huge number of studies. If you want to show more papers, everything is 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 being discussed here and the inside. But at the same time, if you want to add some column, for example, if you want to add like summary of abstract is already there, let's say results. So it will add another column and add results from your study. So limitation on this research. So it will also add some limitations. Okay. And then let's say practical implications. So it will give you all this information. This is really, really powerful and you can download it as a CSV file. You can also upload a few of your PDF files and work within this tool. So these tools are designed for uh, working uh, within the research and the, on the back end, uh, Semantic Scholar is being used, which is a very powerful uh, database for research. Okay, And most importantly, you can ask any follow-up question based on uh, all these information available. Now, how to ask question? This is where, again, you need to go back for the prompt engineering and craft your question and ask some, some you know, related questions uh, based on the prompt engineering, based on the 4C formula. So if I just paste a similar question and now system giving me a few uh, replies, so we can play with it and we can follow all this information and, and we can learn more and most importantly we can uh, you know export all these results into a csv file which is microsoft excel so this is really really powerful ai tools which can help you or which can assist you to write more efficiently because the literature review and learning from the literature is an important part of our research so i think uh, this is a brief introduction of all these tools which we are using um, I gave you introduction to chat GPT. Uh, I gave you introduction to, uh, Bing. We discussed the, uh, size space or illicit. They work in the same way. Let's take the second or third prompt. Now, uh, let's just take this prompt and try to see how this chat GPT is giving up result. Now, if you see, the chat GPT will give you different results compared to the previous one. You can see that in the previous, we we just asked for, uh, you know, retrieval of the information. Can you recall? Now we ask for creating. Now the things are entirely different. Okay, so there are many different aspects of validations, and because we asked chat GPT to evaluate the validity and reliability of the study. So this is what it gives us. So the, the answer is completely different and based on the validity and reliability of the existing studies or research. So this is how we craft our prompt. This is the most important part of working with any AI tool. So if you are not crafting your prompt accurately, it means that you are not receiving accurate information, which might be uh, a difficult situation and we don't want to be in that situation. Okay, so let me just conclude on my presentation and then we can go with the uh, question and answer sessions if you want to ask any question. Okay, so the first thing is about the, the AI tools. AI tools are really important nowadays, powerful as well. So it means that we need to work with AI tools, but we need to learn and we need to reshape the way we are working. And I have gave you a few AI tools, but the word is not limited to these AI tools only. The, it's it's about your use case, the way you want to use AI tools, then you can find out different tools based on your requirement. There are uh, lots of amazing tools available, but it is us, we need to define what we need and how we are going to work with that. And to working with any AI tool, one thing you must need to learn is prompt engineering. It's really powerful and you can work with the 
at the different phase of your AI, uh, you know, prompt engineering. But I have created a simple formula. If you want to follow that formula, that would be really helpful for you all. I think with this, uh, thank you very much. And uh, I think if you have any question, I can take it. Uh,